All right, troops, in this episode, we're going to be building and painting up one of the new battle host boxes. Some of you may be aware, I am off to Scouring of Stirling in two weeks' time. It's Scotland's biggest tournament. Ooh. Super excited. So, Tom from Tabletop Ramblings is also going to Stirling this year, and he has challenged me to paint up one of these starter sets, and we're going to raffle them off, see who can make the most money for charity. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to see how fast I can build and paint up one of these new starter sets and get it on the table ready to play. So first things third, we've got to get the miniatures all built up. I thought I'd start with the orcs as they're the simplest to do. I'm just cutting them out of the sprue with my clippers. I'm trying to be as neat and as close to the miniature as I can because as you can see I'm not doing any mold line removal or any flash fixing with my hobby knife. I just want to get these on the table as fast as I can. I've placed the bases out on the table in the right direction. Yes, slot bases do have a correct direction. You'll see one side is bigger than the other. I see a lot of newer players when they're building miniatures accidentally glue the miniature in the wrong way. It may not seem like a big deal, but when you're playing games and the miniatures are overhanging the bases, it really does get annoying trying to move them about the board. Also, if you're using the old metal ones, they are more likely to fall over when they're not balanced properly on the base. Classic Games Workshop, whenever I order something, I never get the right amount of bases. I always get one less than I need. Luckily, I had an old slot of base in one of the boxes, so I just used that. Next up, glue all the miniatures in. Nothing exciting here. Add the weapons after they're all glued into the bases as well. Next up, the wargs with their new fucking hexagon slot bases. Absolute pain in the ass that they've updated their bases to have hex slots, but the miniatures have round slots. Unfucking believable Games Workshop. So what I do to fix this problem is I mix up a little bit of green stuff and shove it in the hole. If you pardon the pardon. Before gluing down the warg to the base. Any excess green stuff I just put on the base to make it look like a little hill. Remember to keep your green stuff nice and moist. If you pardon the pardon. So it's easy enough to mould and shape. I then decided I might as well use up all the shields, so I added them onto the boys too. So, 19 minutes 25 and we've completed all the plastic base warriors. That didn't take too long at all, I'm pretty happy with that. Time to move on to the Witch King. I do agree that the new plastic kits are absolutely incredible and I love them, but they can be quite complicated to put together compared to the usual stick an orc into a base method that we're used to from back in the day. I highly recommend keeping and using the instructions on these new plastic kits. The first few times doing them I thought I was a fucking god and didn't need the instructions but I made a complete arse of it because all the bits need to go together in a certain order and if you don't do it in the correct order bad things happen so use the instructions, don't be an absolute walloper. As this is the hero model I do take a bit more care and time. I do use my knife to cut off some of the flash and clear up some of the mold lines in this. As a hero, it is a hero, and it is an expensive plastic kit. Um, and then I had the decision whether or not to put the mace on the foot model. I decided to go without the mace because I don't think it's that useful and I don't think that many people take it. I will build it and take it along with me to the army so if somebody wants to chop and change they can add that on after the fact. So that's the Witch King finally built and we're at 37 minutes. That means the Witch King took the same amount of time to build as the entirety of all the troops. It shows you how much more complicated these new plastic kits are. But you know, I am not complaining, this model is absolutely incredible. Just get all the orcs onto my spray sticks and off we go. The orcs I'm going with this new Colour Forge Brown that I have is absolutely fantastic. Let's get this done. So for speed's sake, I am giving the Witch King a black base coat not doing anything fancy like a blue or whatever that I've seen online. Let's keep it simple, shall we? Alright guys, so that's everything base coated up. 42 minutes. Built, base coated. I think that's pretty acceptable. I think half the time was actually just spent building the new plastic kit. It's very detailed and it's beautiful, but it's a bit of a pain in the ass to put together. But yeah, so I'm not going to be painting the Witch King in this video. If you want to see how I painted up this bad boy, I do have a Witch King in 15 minutes video somewhere. And I learned a few tips from that, so I am going to be timing it again because I think I'll be able to do it faster this time. So that'll bring down the total time. But I will be painting up these orcs. I base coated them with 
Hydrax Brown from Colour Forge. Thanks to these people who shouted this out to me when I talked about it in my other video. I absolutely love this stuff. Look at this. I am really, I am so impressed with this Colour Forge. It's a matte, dark finish. It's it even, it looks like the the, the old Scorch Brown, which I love that colour. Um, I do think Rhinoxide is good, but I preferred Scorch Brown. I think Rhinoxide's a bit, bit darker, but yeah, I am very impressed with this. So I think I'll paint out the Witch King off camera and time that. I'm gonna try to beat, I think it was 18 minutes in my last video. I think I could beat it this time. Anyway, let's get started, shall we? Two hours later. So that's the Witch King done. I'm not going to spoil how long it took me, but I think I shaved off two and a half minutes from the time I got in my previous video. I'm pretty happy with that. I think this miniature is tabletop ready and looks pretty decent. I'm still not giving up on this turntable. I swear it's going to work one day. So I want to show you how quickly you can do an orc. First, I start with bolt gun metal. Given all the armor and weapons, a covering of this. So now onto the hair and the cloth in the miniature. I use blacks and there's only one to colour black and loads of different colours of brown just to give a bit of variety in the different shades of absolute crap that these orcs wear. I'm purposely not using any colours in this so you could use them as either Angmar or Mordor. I know lots of people like greens for Angmar and Mordor will be a bit more red but I'm doing colour agnostic so that you can use them for either faction. Now onto the skin. I tend to stick to the same different colours for orc skin. I've got Flesh, Bugman's Glow, The Fang, maybe even a little bit of a brown or a XV88. I'll just randomly apply these to different orcs so that they've all got a bit different personality. Now we're on to the key part of this orc technique that I have, Agrax. We take the orc and we absolutely drown it in Agrax all over, every single bit. This will help blend all the different colours of browns and greens and skins, blacks together and it'll look absolutely manky like an orc should. Now finally what I do is get a bit of kitchen roll and I take the colours I've used for that orc and used flayed one flesh to bring up the tone of that colour and all I do is dry brush over that area on the orc. Using flayed one flesh to highlight all the different areas will bring the orc together and look a bit more uniform. The only thing I don't highlight with that is the metal which I use Stormhost Silver for. I try and make it look really scratchy and broken and worn. And I may go back and use some of the rusty weathering powder that I used on the Witch King later down the line. Right, that's this wee boy done. Only 8 minutes. I think that's pretty acceptable for an orc. I think it'll be much faster when I do the batch painting because I'll be just doing it all on a one arc rather than stopping and starting and doing different colours. So hopefully that'll bring down the average time per orc to about 6 minutes, hopefully. Although he doesn't look that good at the moment because it is a bit of a rush job, once he's in the big group, of 24 orcs, I swear he'll look good. He'll look tabletop ready. That's the phrase we're going for with this, tabletop ready. Promise. I'm not going to bore you with me painting up 24 orcs and 6 war riders, different colours of browns and blacks. I think that'd be pretty incredibly boring. So let's just have a montage.
So guys, as I said earlier, not the best, but in he goes. What do you think? So this whole set, Angmar, built to painted, took me four hours and 12 seconds. What do you think of that? I think for this level, it's not the best quality, but for four hours and 12 minutes, I think that's pretty acceptable. I'll be interested to see how much we can make for the charity. Um, I do realise I have painted Mordor symbols uh, on the freehand. Just did it out of habit, guys. So you know, if you get an, if you want to do Angmar, just paint over it. Do apologise or just spray paint over the whole army and start again yourself if you want. So I really tried to just go with generic basic orcs. I really do need to get a big absolute horde of orcs. So I need to think about how to convert. Um, if you want to go check out who I think is the master of orcs. Uh, fucking rabbit man. Fucking leave me alone, Bucky. I need to start again now. I am planning on doing some really big first age battles, so I'm going to need to do a lot of converting of orcs. And I think the absolute orc master is Anders Talks Hobbies. Go check him out. He's probably the, the biggest inspiration for me to start this channel, so definitely go like and subscribe. He is amazing at converting orcs. He's got two videos. He makes two different factions of orcs look different. It's fucking amazing, man. I'd, hopefully I can do the same one day, but for now I'm just using the shitty starter set. But at the same time, I do love these old poses, especially the axe boy. I just love it. So guys, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, I absolutely love a wee comment. It really gets me going. Um, I do try to respond to them all. I recently found out that YouTube has a restricted comment section, so if you sent me some swear words or any abuse, I've only just found it. I did enjoy that. <laughs> or it's just spam links to porn websites, which are also great. Keep them coming as well, all you bots out there. Oh, and uh, just before we go, uh, next video will probably be the scouring of Sterling, Scotland's biggest tournament. Ooh, I'm going to do uh, another hobby vlog, but this time I'm going to try and remember to actually film the games. So it isn't just fucking filled with memes. <laughs> Love yous as always. See you later. Thanks for watching everyone. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. And remember to give my bell a good old ring. Wow. Did I hand it all in? Or? Uh, no, it should be okay now. Cool. I was close. I nearly got caught fucking playing with Donald Trump in the garden there. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Fucking gone and done it. Uh, plan B. All right, guys. So, fuck. All right, troops. In this episode, we are going to be. Why oh, to bang the table when I'm speaking? <coughs> so, Tom from Tabletop Ramblings is also going to Sterling. And he has challenged me to paint up one of these battle host bar, uh, starter sets. <coughs> so Tom from Tabletop Ramblings has also a uh, not you, Tom, me. So Tom from Tabletop Ramblings is also going to Sterling this year. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> oh, fuck! This is fucking embarrassing. <laughs>